Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I am finally filming my plant tour. I'm gonna go around my house and show you all of my different house plants that I have. Probably not going to worry too much about outdoor plants. I do have like a few geraniums and stuff, but they've, they're looking a little sad after a pretty tough scorching summer here in Australia. So maybe we'll look at those next spring. <laughs> so I do live in Australia, which means that we are in autumn now. We're about to head into the cooler months so my plants are definitely going to start to get a wee bit more dormant. Some of them have had an extremely prolific spring and summer which has been so exciting. I think plants have been really crucial in just teaching me a lot about myself. I definitely struggle at times with perfectionism and just being okay with things not being perfect and I think plants are a really great teacher of this because a plant can be thriving and still have like some yellow leaves or maybe it grows in a really weird distorted way because of the light so it's kind of like plants I guess are in some ways very imperfectly perfect they very much are like humans where they're a product of nature and nurture and I guess they've really taught me that even if I give them as much care and attention as I can possibly can there will still be times where some of them get bugs or pests and some of them might not be growing in the the right way that they should be or perhaps I might underwater some or overwater some like there's there's there are some issues that we encounter as as plant parents um just like normal parents you know your kids get sick and it doesn't mean you're a bad parent it's just that, that happens and it's the same with plants and it's really taught me a lot I feel like my plants are very much divided into three categories there are those that are like absolutely thriving they're the ones I tend to show a lot on my Instagram and on here like I'm always talking about them because I'm really proud of them then there are those that are just kind of existing they're doing fine they're living they are not necessarily like thriving in a big way but they're not dying they're just kind of surviving and then I do have a few that I have managed to kill I think I've been a plant parent since December 2018 and I've definitely managed to kill probably I'd say about seven or eight plants in that time so I do want you guys to know that I am not perfect there is no such thing as a perfect plant parent um, we all have some plants that just don't do well I've had a few that I've brought home from the nursery and they've been difficult from the start I've had some that were amazing to begin with and then encountered problems it's very much a journey and the good thing is at least with plants that even though they are living things they they don't have consciences they don't have souls so it's not quite so bad when you kill one as opposed to a pet or a child so I think they're a really good starting point as well if you have never had to like care and nurture for something before before you get into parenthood I think looking after plants is a really great thing they also have been wonderful absolutely wonderful for my anxiety I think having things to care for that are not just myself it takes me out of my own head it's a very mindful process going around and like caring for your plants like checking over them watering them like tending to their needs it's just a great way to get out of your own head plants bring a lot of good energy to a space they oxygenate your room and they they soften the features of a harsh room especially like we have a lot of white in here and the greenery just adds such a beautiful feel this is our bedroom I'm going to show you around downstairs first and then we'll go upstairs and look at the plants up there um, but yeah I just think they are such a beautiful way to not only decorate your space but it's also about just bringing some life into your space and currently when I'm filming this um, the state I live in in Victoria is pretty much on like a lockdown it's a very wishy-washy lockdown but we're pretty much on lockdown because of the pandemic so we're all spending our days inside working living at home I think a good contributing factor to why I'm actually coping really well with this situation is the fact that I'm surrounded by life and by greenery and I don't feel as deprived actually staying at home because I have nature inside so if you don't own a plant and there's some way that you're able to get a plant maybe they sell them at your supermarket or something I know my local supermarket actually sells a few cute little house plants um, so definitely get yourself a plant to tend to during this really tough time while we're all stuck inside and you know it's as I say, it's gonna be great for your anxiety it's gonna be great for your space it'll oxygenate your space it's just I think now is the time to become a plant parent. So without further ado, let's get talking about my plants. This is the view looking into our bedroom from our closet. So the way to get into this room 
is through that door but this is just like quite a nice overview for you to see the setup so we've actually got bookcases that line the wall along there and then our bed kind of tucks in there it's like a little nook and I absolutely love it but the first plant I wanted to show you was this my glorious monstera so when I got this plant about a year ago it was about half the size I would say even like a third of the size it was really quite small it only probably came up to about here on the shelf like I used to have another shelf up the top with shoes on it that I had to kind of condense over here when this guy started growing enormous the only struggles I have with this guy is that he does get a little bit dehydrated because he's right in front of the air conditioning unit so it's not like the best some of his leaves are a little bit wrinkled he could probably do with a little bit more humidity but otherwise he is thriving he gets not lots of nice light being near the window and then next to him we have this little one he's kind of like a little marbled vine not actually 100 sure what type of plant this one is that's the other thing i don't actually know what all my plants are <laughs> it shows how much of a non-plant guru i am but he's some sort of like marble queen thing uh, it's not a devil's ivy but the, the leaves are a little smaller but he's very beautiful and i love this plant pot as well with the wee birdies so cute and then next to him we have a little picture of me and alex at our wedding and then I have this little guy. This is like a little mini vine thing. I got sent this for free. Like my friend sent me another plant in the post as like a gift. It was so lovely. And this came as an extra little um, bonus plant, you could say. And honestly, it was about like three inches long when I got it. It was tiny and he's grown so much. So he's some kind of little... I'll see if I can zoom in anymore if you can see. But yeah, I'm not 100% sure what this little vine is, but he is very cute very dainty and delicate as we move to this side of the bed you can see I've got my little mister up there which I hardly ever use to be honest because misting your plants it's not the most effective way to bring humidity to them so I felt like it was a wee bit pointless um, but if I do need to mist something desperately say if I, like a, a fern then that's what I grab um, but you'll see that I have here a little Monstera adacioni and he's not doing the best I accidentally forgot to water him a couple of weeks ago and he got a wee bit dry you can see one of his leaves there is a little yellow um, and he had a couple other ones that I had to pick off because they just shriveled um, but he's okay he's doing all right and then below him we have a peacock plant so this is a type of calathea i believe and this plant has definitely been through a little bit of a journey too um he's struggled a little bit with some kind of pest that was leaving his leaves a bit sticky so i've had to really use a lot of like neem oil on them and clean them um he's looking a lot better uh, but he's still in recovery and then next to him we have this <laughs> the most deformed money plant you can imagine which is very telling of our current financial situation as you can see he's completely like growing sideways towards the light which to be honest I kind of love because it's quite unusual and quirky in the back there he's actually grown a couple of little pups which is how this plant propagates so I need to actually repot it and then take out these little ones and repot those into new pots so they're like his little offspring um you'll notice some of the lower leaves the older leaves are going a bit yellow he is a wee bit nutrient deficient definitely needs a new pot needs some food yeah not the most happy plant at the moment but he is one of my originals so he's he's hung in there for a long time next to him is one of my many devil's ivy devil's ivy for some reason excel in this house so they are something that i tend to propagate a lot and make new plants so this is actually a propagation that i have grown from a little cutting and now he's doing very well and i've kind of looped him around because he got so long and was sort of getting all up in alex's bed space so now he's like a cute little halo it's actually kind of adorable uh, but no he's doing really well and then next to that we have my makeup storage chest this is where i store all of my makeup and stuff and i have my little like jewelry set up on top and things and above that we have this gorgeous fern now i think this is called an emerald fern i can't be 100% sure but it is very floofy and gorgeous um this is actually though I will admit this is the second one I've had <laughs> the very very first one I got like over a year ago uh it just got a little too dry over the winter when we were like traveling and stuff and it was just starting to not look as best and eventually just all the leaves were literally falling everywhere all over the floor like it was just a mess so I had to get rid of that one and I got a new one and this guy is doing much much better and we just attach them to the ceiling with a ceiling hook. We do rent this place, so we obviously don't like to put too many holes and things into the walls, but the ceilings are really easy to like patch up when we leave, so we've just got a little hooky there. 
um, but, but he's doing really well. He is getting a little dry. You might see a little bit of browning in the fronds underneath. Um, they're the oldest leaves, obviously. They're starting to... If he does get a little bit dry, they're the ones that tend to go. But overall, he's looking pretty healthy and floofy. And then if we move around this side of the bedroom, we see the edge of the bed, big mirror, a gorgeous burgundy rubber plant, and Jonathan. <laughs> this is my favorite Devil's Ivy. It's a variegated variety, and it is so extra and so prolific and so fabulous. And that's why I named him after Jonathan from Queer Eye. However, let's start with a little close-up of probably one of my favorite plants in the house. This is my burgundy rubber plant and her name is Ruby. I haven't named all my plants. I just kind of named my favorites. But she's so gorgeous and she's absolutely thriving now that I've moved her down here. She used to be upstairs in the stairwell but it wasn't quite enough light for her. So I moved her down here. She gets a nice amount of light. And this planter is from Adairs. It's only about 40 something dollars so it's like not is expensive as some of their other ones and she's doing so well she was about half the size when I got her so she's really just like taken off and this was one of my original plants that I got back in December 2018 so a real oldie and then yeah a little close-up of Jonathan so you can see I've used another ceiling hook to attach him to the ceiling and he doesn't have a proper kind of pot on him so when I water him I do have to like take it all down and take it through to the shower and it is a bit of a faff I do plan to figure out another way to kind of be able to water him from up there but for now this works and yeah so he's got about four different arms two of them are really really long and they're the ones that come down here and go all the way around like the mirror and such and then this one's the shortest one which hangs down here and then this one is kind of looped back on itself just to kind of add lots of greenery there. If you are wondering how I manage to keep them like in certain places on the walls I use these little 3M hooks they're like little clear hooks and this just helps to keep the plant like in its place so you can really help to train a plant to go where you want it to go especially these kind of vine sort of plants so that's a really handy trick little invisible 3M hooks. But I absolutely love this plant. I just get so much joy from it. It is especially nice if you're like taking a little selfie in the mirror and you see all the greenery around, like it's just so pretty. And then down here on this desk, which used to be my old like beauty desk, now it actually just holds my lingerie in there. Um, and it's really just like an extra workspace, which <laughs> at the moment is really useful because I'll often come down here and set up my laptop and do some editing and stuff while Alex is upstairs. We do have a little succulent here in this wee little elephant pot. I don't know why he's not doing well. He's got so much sun. Uh, he just doesn't really grow. <laughs> but that's okay. He looks cute. And then I've got this plant, which to be honest, I've forgotten the name. I think it's called an arrowhead plant or something like that. But he is doing great. He's honestly probably about like quadrupled in the time that I've owned him. He's just looking real cute. And then this plant pot Alex actually gave me for my birthday this year. So then we go through our wardrobe into the bathroom and I'll show you guys some of the plants in here. This sweet guy here is some kind of ficus plant, like it's related to the fiddle leaf, but it's like a little mini vine. Um, very, very delicate. This again was one of the first plants me and Alex bought, um, which is very cool. He had a wee accident last year. He was a lot bigger and bushier and like was all intertwined in the raw iron, but I forgot to water him. I think I just accidentally missed him on one of my watering days and he got quite dry and a lot of his leaves, you can kind of still see remnants of some of the the dryness and a lot of his leaves I had to cut off and I trimmed him right back but he has bounced back this spring and summer which is fabulous and he's looking real cute and then we go up 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 to possibly the worst piece of lily you will ever see in your life <laughs> this is one of those plants that is like hanging in there for dear life that I cannot make live like I can look after the hardest plants like fiddle leaves and everything but a damn piece of lily is the bane of my life. He did end up growing another lily this year which I was so stoked about but it still managed to go green which I've looked up and it says it's getting too much light which I'm very surprised about because this is the bathroom where there's only one little single source of light over there like that that window that's it so it's not super bright in here so I'm very surprised but guys this plant has been freshly watered like two days ago so he should be a lot perkier but he's not this is all he does so I hope that this can bring you some comfort like I'm clearly not a plant expert because 
Look at this guy. <laughs> He's so sad. And then we move over here. So above our little towels, we have this amazing vine. Um, this I got originally with only about three or four leaves on it. It was really, really small. It wasn't a cutting though. It was a new plant. And for a devil's ivy, the leaves on this guy are massive. Like they're really, really big. They're like the size of my hand. Pretty, pretty happy. Pretty living a good life over there. And then we move over here. We have my little brush and beauty station area and we have this little guy which i'm not 100 percent sure what this kind of one is it was like a teeny teeny tiny plant like it literally only came to about there when i first got it it was just like a little seedling thing um and he's grown quite a bit sort of seems to be somewhat maybe related to the rubber plant i'm not sure but if you can tell me what this is i'd really appreciate knowing so those are all the plants in my bedroom and bathroom downstairs so i'm going to take you guys upstairs and we'll look around some of the plants up there So welcome to the most planty filled part of the apartment. This is our stairwell. This is where we first kind of started putting in plants along here and then things rapidly grew. <laughs> this fiddle leaf fig was one of the first plants I got as well. And you can see how much darker like the older leaves are compared to some of this new growth. Fiddle leaves can take a while to adjust to a new surrounding. So when I first got him, um, he didn't grow a new leaf for about 10 months because I think he was just adjusting to the new space and the new light and then this spring and summer he's absolutely gone wild and it's just grown so many nice new leaves it's very exciting and then next to him we have again one of my giant devil's ivy and he is very much a trailing plant look at him go all the way down the stairs cascades like Rapunzel. Again, he was one of the earliest plants I got. I think I got him in January last year. Originally was literally just this size. So all of this growth has been here and it's absolutely amazing. I really think if you want a plant that shows a lot of growth, I think a devil's ivy is the way to go. They seem to just be really, really easy to grow and it's a very satisfying plant because it does put out a lot of new growth often. And then in the corner over here, we have another sad plant. He's not very happy. This is my bird's nest fern. And when I first got him, he was really great and thrived for quite some time. I'll come down here to show him off because his pot is really beautiful. So this pot is from a local place nearby. So I can't really say where it's from. It's just from like a little market. And then next to him, I've got some of the plant runner neem oil, which is what I use to help get rid of pests. You can see like he's doing okay, but he's got a few dark spots and crispy leaves and whatnot because I think originally I was overwatering him. So he was getting those black sort of dark spots. I did remove a couple of badly damaged leaves. So then he went through a phase where I was too scared to water him and I think he then got a bit underwatered. <laughs> so he's got a few little crispy edges and whatnot. So it's been a bit of a journey. I mean, he's still hanging in there, but he is again not a thriver he's in the like survivor category this is a little boston fern i think as well and her name is cersei because she's in an elephant next to her is a beautiful calathea orbifolia i believe is the name <laughs> but a gorgeous plant with gorgeous foliage you can see though that mine does have some little crispy edges and such and that is because this plant as well as this plant this is another peacock plant like i had downstairs that's also got some crispy edges they are very prone to getting quite affected by the chemicals in hard water so you're meant to use like distilled water or rain water on them but honestly i always forget to collect rain water and i refuse to buy bottled water for my plants so they're just dealing with tap water and they've gotten a few crispy edges and whatnot but i'm not that bothered again they're imperfectly perfect just the way they are. <laughs> um, and then this little plant here is actually in a mug. This mug's from H&M Home. And I can't quite remember what this plant is called. It sort of reminds me of the arrowhead plant, but it looks a little different. Um, again, I'm not 100% sure what it is. So if you know, let me know. And then we move over to a very sad plant. Oh my gosh, my aluminium plant, RIP. You are the most determined plant I own. As you can see, he's very lanky and very like, sad looking <laughs> ever since i got this plant this was again one of my originals that i got in december 2018 and it has never thrived it started dropping leaves and getting brown crispy edges like from the beginning and i wasn't sure if i was underwatering it overwatering it i've like tried every which way as you can see he is putting out quite a bit of new growth and he has consistently done that so it's kind of like he's happy but sad at the same time. Then we have this plant, which I'm really in love with. And this was a plant that did originally get quite infested with spider mites and I had to really care for it. Um, and it didn't grow a new leaf for like a year. 
uh, and it lost a few of its other leaves due to damage and I it only had three leaves and I was like oh my gosh this plant's not doing well and then this spring it has just absolutely bloomed and it's like grown so many nice new leaves so it's very exciting we're very proud of him and then next to him is this little prayer plant which you probably can't quite see and again has like probably quadrupled in size since I bought him he's very cool and I like the pot the pot is from Ikea I believe actually and then next to him is a snake plant this is called your mother-in-law's tongue which I just absolutely love that name because it's sharp <laughs> it's a plant that I think actually needs a lot more light than people think it does it's often on the list of like plants that don't need any light and I'm like I hate those lists on Pinterest because plants all plants need light some plants do better than others with lower light but this is one that needs I think a good moderate light source next to him we've got this gorgeous heart leafed philodendron which I think is a really beautiful romantic take on the devil's ivy it's quite a different plant though the stems on it are quite dense and thick and rigid compared to the ivy which you can really manipulate so this one has a little bit more of a mind of its own it's got little heart shaped leaves and it's so pretty my friend actually bought this for my birthday and it's so nice and then next to him is another propagation that I did. This was the first plant I actually ever propagated. And this is the offspring of this guy. So this big plant here, I took a cutting of it early on in its early days and we managed to grow this beautiful plant from it. So it originally started with three leaves. So these three leaves here are the originals. You can see that they, they are starting to yellow slightly just because they are the older leaves. Growing all of this all the way down there, but he is starting to pretty much not grow any more leaves because his like stem is all the way in the dark down there so the plant doesn't obviously want to grow leaves down there so this is about as long as you can get I'll probably just like keep trimming him over here we have a little fern I'm not 100% sure on the exact name of this one but I think he just looks like Sideshow Bob I should put some little googly eyes on the front of the pot it'd look hilarious these little hanging shelves are from Kmart and I just stuck them up with 3M hooks and they're so great for hanging plants on the wall. He's really cute and he's really thriving at the moment. He got a little dry sort of middle of the year last year, but he's bounced back with a lot of care and love. And then next to him is another, another devil's ivy. I keep trimming him. I've taken cuttings, got some that are sitting in water now, like propagating and he just keeps growing. So he's even like looped around on himself now. Just two things as well, before we move into the rest of the living room, this is the little watering can that I have. It's from Kmart and it's really cute. If you're a plant parent, I highly recommend grabbing one of these. It's like a little uh, water meter. It also measures light and pH. Um, so this is a really, really great little tool if you are struggling to figure out like how to how much to water your plants and stuff. You can take all the guesswork out of it by using this. Ferns and that need a bit more water, so you want to water them when they're like just in the green, nearly in the red. But things like fiddle leaves, you want to wait until they are in the red before you give them a drink. So really handy little thing. I'll try and link it down below for you. Moving away from the stairwell, you'll see that we have my desk here. So we're gonna first start with this little plant over here. This one guy is so cool. So this is a watermelon peperomia and it obviously looks like little baby watermelons. And I got this as a gift from a friend. She literally bought a little cutting online and like sent it to me in the post. It arrived on Valentine's Day last year, so I've had it for a little over a year. It was originally about three leaves. And look how well he's done in that time. Some of his leaves are a little like, you know, distorted and as you say, imperfect. Some of them are curling a little bit. Maybe they're not, like maybe it's a little bit dry in here for them, but for the most part, the leaves are doing really well. On the other side of the TV cabinet, we have this little cutting here and also Frederick, who we'll get to in a second. Here is a cutting of a painted nettle. Now, Alex bought me a beautiful, fluffy, painted nettle plant for Christmas. I was so excited. I've wanted one of these for ages. Guys, it just died. I would try and water it less and the leaves would still fall off. I'd water it more, the leaves would still fall off. I still don't know to this day why that happened. When it got down to only a few of the good kind of stems left, I decided to just give up and I took cuttings of the best leaves, stuck them in water and I'm just trying to propagate them so I can eventually plant them again and try again because I didn't want to like you know throw the whole thing away so it's a good tip if your plant is dying cut off the healthy foliage try and like propagate it in some way and then you can try again and he's actually doing really well like these are all new growth since sitting in the water so he's actually doing quite 
quite well there and I have another cutting as well over there in the kitchen you can see but let's talk about Frederick so Frederick is my giant fiddle leaf <laughs> he's getting so big that he's starting to like really cover a lot of the gallery wall might have to do some rearranging and he is just so floofy and so amazing and he's had so much new growth this season it's so inspiring and just incredible to witness you know and I even managed to get him to double branch there. So this was originally one branch and I did a little pinching of the buds and we got two branches now. So it's very exciting. Fiddle leaves are definitely the kind of variety I feel like very familiar with and I can offer quite a bit of advice on. So I have actually written a blog post about it. So I'll have that linked below if you're interested just on how to care for your fiddle leaf. And then as we come into the kitchen, you can see that we've got this little propagation station here in the corner. So this is a little spice rack from Ikea. It's not very expensive. It makes such a great little like propagation station for your plants. So this is a cutting. These are cuttings from one of my Devil's Ivy, but I've actually let them sit in there a little bit long. So now they're actually gonna have to live in water permanently because they've developed uh, water roots as opposed to normal soil roots. So it is something to be aware if you're gonna water propagate your plants, only do it until it just starts to show roots and then plant it in soil. If you leave it too long and then try and plant it in soil, it's used to too much water. So now like you can still enjoy these plants, that's just that they have to be planted in water instead of soil. So that's pretty much what they're doing now. They're just decorative. <laughs> And then next to it, of course, I have a couple more of those painted nettle cuttings, which are doing really good. So I'm very happy. We have this area of our kitchen, which has all this like grassy stuff above the sink, which a lot of you are often asking like what that is. It is fake. <laughs> this is not real. These are those classic kind of Ikea plastic plants. Before I got into real plants, um, I did love greenery, but I was too petrified that I'd kill plants. So I stuck with fake plants and we had all of these from the old place. So I thought I'd just keep using them anyway because they do they do look cute. And the final place where we have some plants inside uh, is here. We've got a little rubbish bin down there and a, a little tray. It's just like a kind of little utility area. I've got my gorgeous Norfolk Island pine. This is one of my favorite plants. Uh, makes a great Christmas tree every festive season. Norfolk Island pines are actually native to uh, Norfolk Island, which is an island sort of run by Australia, you could say, in the Tasman Sea. Uh, and so it's actually not a real pine tree. It doesn't produce pine cones. It just is called a pine because it looks a bit like it. But the leaves are really soft and bendy and flexible. So they're not traditional needles. They just kind of give a bit of an illusion is of being a pine um, but I absolutely love them I think they look so like kind of minimal and cool and like festive as well and I don't know I'm just really attracted to them they often line the seasides in Australia and even in New Zealand and stuff so um, they're my favorite trees to see down by the beach lots of them over in Perth and Fremantle when Alex was living there and I was so stoked to get my own one to grow inside um, it needs quite a bit of light I think a lot of people think it can survive in quite a dark space but you'll see some of the lower leaves are a bit droopy because when I first got it it wasn't getting enough light so I've moved it into a really bright spot right by the window with the skylight above and you can see its upper leaves are a lot more perky and happy so make sure the sky gets a lot of light if you do get one see this really cute little plant plate from your star which I just love it's pretty so then we have next to him a little another little elephant <laughs> you can see I like elephants um, and it's got a little string of pearls plant in it which is actually a succulent so don't overwater this one it needs quite minimal water it needs quite a lot of light as well basically the thicker the leaves the less water it really needs because it holds water it holds onto it so it's a good rule of thumb and then next to him i just have my little basil plant which is actually not the one i showed in like a blog post a few weeks ago i find with basil plants i just buy them from the supermarket they only last a few months before they start to kind of go to seed and go a bit weird so I find I have to replace them every few months so this is quite a new one I will show you outside a little sneak peek we do have like a little geranium there and there's a few other um, herbs that do quite well outside so like sage thyme rosemary things like that as well so I hope you guys enjoyed having a little look around all the different house plants I have and yeah just seeing how I've set them up if you have any questions as well about house plants or anything related to this video leave them down below in the comments and i'll try and get back to you guys also any other ideas on other plant content you might be interested in seeing i'm especially keen to do some blog posts on it so yeah leave your suggestions below remember i do have my fiddle leaf fig blog post linked below if you're interested or you can go to lifebyarnaelaine.com 
and if you want to interact with me in between my videos and check out some more plant content then definitely check out my Instagram, Twitter, Facebook and Pinterest and until my next video I hope you guys have a wonderful few days and we'll talk soon. Bye! Thank you.